On this episode of Two Women Sailing, we make our way back through Long Island Sound and fly through the East River. She gets to do what she wanted to do on her birthday, and go sailing. I'm Vanessa. I'm Sarah. And, and we're, we're Two Women Sailing. sailing. Today, Vanessa and I leave Mystic, Connecticut, the cutest little village this side of Fisher's Island Sound, which for you, the viewers, is pretty much Long Island Sound. Where to today, Captain? Uh, Port Jefferson, with any luck. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day, it's gonna be a 60 mile day. It's about halfway down Long Island Sound, and it's on Long Island. There's not a lot of places to anchor on the Connecticut side because we're gonna have wind out at the south and all the anchorages on the Connecticut side unfortunately have no southern protection. And we've had two nights in a row of roly roly anchorages and we don't want to do that again. We're off to an exciting start. Actually, we're trying to motor sail, but there's not much wind. Going. About 7.2. Which is really fast. And we've been motor sailing for quite a while now. That floppy sail we had most of the day is finally full and we are cruising. Oh, that's beautiful. Ah, that's much better. An excellent afternoon of motor sailing is a big contrast from the morning we had. Soon Port Jefferson is in our sights. So we work together to bring the headsail in. And that late afternoon sky is gorgeous. That rope is attached to the chain. I could let that rope out. The problem is, hi buddy. The, hi. The problem is, I don't trust this because it's wrapped up. I don't, I don't believe in that rope. So what I can do, Port Jefferson offers a bit of a conundrum to us in that we can't find a spot with water shallower than 30 feet. And we definitely do not have enough chain to allow for the scope that's needed to keep us safe. Scope is the amount of chain or road you let out when anchoring. So Vanessa gets creative. She uses two of our dock lines to make a bridle that will give us the scope we need. She's not super proud of it, but it totally works. Way to think outside the boat. Whip digs it too. Back at it again, and it's the captain's birthday. 50 feels good. 50 feels like 37. Ooh. I know, but with a nicer boat. Yeah. I didn't have a boat when I was 37. Well, this is quite the 50th year for you. I, you know, it's secretly what I wanted for my 50th year. And I guess I, as you like to say, manifested that shit. <laughs> I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty happy. And now we're sailing and it's, uh, we're just about to hit five knots, speed over ground, which isn't bad considering we only have 10 knots of wind. No, we just hit five. So, well, she gets to do what she wanted to do on her birthday, go sailing. And anchor out. <laughs> and anchor out. <laughs> Time to cook the birthday girl a birthday breakfast. Now 
not too shabby, eh? Eh? Oh, dang. The motor's on. I don't even know what to say. With any luck, it's only temporary. Let's try this again. Up the mainsail goes. And out comes the headsail. Where's our wind? Nothing is happening. We're going super slow. Our speed. Whew. Two knots. Two knots won't get us anywhere fast. This isn't going as planned. Let's have wind today. west end of Long Island Sound and we're headed into our anchorage and um, I saw this island with a lighthouse on it because they have those here and but I couldn't find it on my chart so I said Sarah will you tell me how far can I go on either side of that light, lighthouse island and she couldn't find it either and turns out <laughs> it's not a lighthouse it's a barge A lighthouse island. Come on. I'm kind of nervous. Maybe she should have her eyes checked again. This is 50. This is 50. Woo, got some waves. Thanks, Barge. Ready, so tracking in three, two, one. That's an interesting angle. We're trying this sailing thing one more time today. way to end Vanessa's birthday with her doing what she loves. So our neighbor's dinghy just floated away. Oh, that's his boat. That's the dinghy way out there. And no one's around and he's clueless so we're, we're hopping in our dinghy to go rescue it for him. Hopefully it's got a painter on it. If not, we'll have to attach ours. We can. Yeah, we have enough. Operation Dinghy Retrieval. But it looks like a really nice and really expensive dinghy, so we would be pissed if our dinghy went floating away from our boat, so. And then I'm gonna just stop running the prop so that we don't pick up anything because we don't know what lines are in the water. I think you think we can hip tow it? You think I could hold on to it? I think we could hip tow it, but I think it might be harder to hip tow it. Oh geez, cover the barnacles. Okay. Yeah, this. There's the painter right there. Um how long is the painter? Yeah, can it be dragged behind us almost like yeah. towed? Yeah, we're gonna tow it, give it okay. some distance. Cool. And. You gonna hold on to it? 
You've got a cleat right behind your right calf. Your dinghy, your dinghy floated away. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna do my best to not put a mark on your hull. He's gonna get it. Okay, we're, we're go. off. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good night. <laughs> You're sure. welcome. It's another Vanessa and Sarah adventure. Sometimes you're bored on the hook. Sometimes you're not. Hey man, there's no shot in Freud in cruising. Yeah. Even even when people don't like you. Dinghy rescue complete. Mission accomplished. We're headed back into familiar territory today, down the East River and through New York City. Yeah. I'm, I'm like excited about it. We got good current, of course, because we timed it that way. Um, and we're gonna have a tailwind of this surprisingly brisk fall wind. Um, should be a good ride. It's just gloomy, but it's not bad conditions. It's just gloomy. And my hair is amazing right now. <laughs> Her hair is getting more amazing with each passing day. As is the trend now, we say goodbye to another area. So long, Long Island Sound. We're going back down the East River. What you think about that? You gonna take a nap? It's not the greatest weather today, so it's actually a good thing just to be a motorboat. Can. You see how hard it's leaning over and you can see the water rushing past it? That's some current. The best part about the East River is riding the current. We got up to 11 knots at one point. This helps us fly through the East River. It kind of feels like this. That was a little more intense than the last time we went through New York City. That was, uh, that was something. That was very intense. I feel like the ferry traffic was more, there's no recreational traffic, but man, we hit, we hit the second half of the river at peak current. We were flying. Then we had standing waves. Thankfully, we had a tailwind. Otherwise, who knows what would have happened. Playing a little frogger, only, None of these guys are moving. They're, they're all at anchor. So, Jess is just weaving her way through. But sometimes it's hard to tell if they indeed are moving. <laughs> so, we're trying to be very vigilant. Even though it's a dreary day, nothing beats one more shot of that New York skyline. We're headed back to Sandy Hook, New Jersey. We've been here before, so there's no stress about the unknown with this anchorage. Our chain is a bit stiff as Vanessa tries to deploy the anchor. 
She's strong enough to power it free, though. There's some cool history we're sitting right next to. See these houses? They're part of Fort Hancock, a former United States Army fort. It protected New York Harbor from invasion by sea. Its peak population was during World War II, when it was home to more than 7,000 soldiers. And what we're looking at is Officer's Row. People still live in these houses. Some of them are even vacation homes. Any takers at a mere $438 a night? That's all for now. We'll see you on the next leg of our journey. You like us, we like you. So go ahead and subscribe so we can see more of each other.